Yeah, it's amazing. Were you able to see the um, the I Am Second film? It's nine minutes. Um, it's a good one to pull up to watch real quick before the interview. Okay. It'll really stimulate you for, for coaching. In four years, I accumulated 27 mugshots. I was about to go to prison for a long time. They transferred me to a aggravated assault tank. I wasn't supposed to be there. I would just pace and pace and pace. And this old man says, man, they're gonna chew you off the bone. The doors are closed and then something happened. Amazing. Yeah. I love that Yeah, it's oh. like the second or third time I've watched it. I have a hard time watching oh, it. Oh, it gives me <laughs> yeah. chills yeah. To, so. to watch that. Hey, y'all. Uh, welcome to Silver Lining. And I have Michael with uh, me today. Welcome, Michael. Lorraine, good to see you. Oh, you as, a, you as well, always. I'm so always. excited. I was so excited when you called me, and, and, and I'm, I'm honored. I was like, wow, I'm ready to do this. Awesome. Well, thank you for agreeing to come. I, I was, like I was telling you earlier, I was kind of, oh, I don't know. I'm kind of chicken ass Michael to come. So. Why's that? I don't know. I mean, look at you. Dude. I mean, your show is amazing. Well, I'm just a little BB in a big stack of BBs. Yeah, but so. M, M2 Rocks. M2 The Rock. M2 The Rock is amazing. Oh, thank and you. I love when I watch what you're doing on there. Um, you want to talk about what you do on your yeah, M2 so, Rock? Yeah, so, you know, we... Um, it's, it's amazing because uh, M2 The Rock, it wasn't designed. I didn't sit down and make this business plan that I'm going to start this show called M2 The Rock. You know, it was... It was all created by God, and it was, um, you know, a result of, of, of my past and, and what it was like and, you know, what happened and what's my life like today. And, you know, it, you know I'm, a, I'm a recovering drug addict alcoholic, and, you know, my last, uh, you know, last time I had a drink or a drug was May 29th, 2017. And, you know, if, if they would have released me on, you know, May 30th, 2017, I would have drank and used again. But it, mm -hmm. it took having a spiritual awakening um, while I was incarcerated after my 27th mugshot. You know, I'm <laughs> a slow learner. That's a lot yeah. of mugshots. Yeah, I got. <laughs> for some reason, I have a high threshold to pain. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yes. But I had a spiritual awakening um, while incarcerated, and you know, I realized I kept hitting this this deal called you know rock bottom. You know, this this rock. We hear about that. I hit rock bottom, and. Mm -hmm. You know, I finally realized that the rock at the bottom at all these times was God. Um, and my name's Michael Moulton, so it's M.M., -M, so mm -hmm. M2, uh, mm -hmm. the rock. And so it just kind of happened naturally. And, you know, when I got released miraculously and, you know, traveled over 300 miles by foot to turn myself in, um, wow. you know, I was pardoned. And, mm -hmm. and you know, the local media picked it up and iHeartRadio picked it up. And all I did was just share my story. And I keep sharing my story and reading to people and, um and it's just turned out I'm sitting here with you today. So it's all been about attraction, not promotion. Uh, you know? Of course. You know, of it's course. like you calling me. We don't have a team that goes out there and says, hey, we're promoting Michael Moulton him to the rock. Right. Uh, this is our price list if you want him to come. Yes. Everything that you've seen and see on social media and on TV has all been about attraction, um, not awesome. promotion. So. Well, uh, that's what we know. Right. You know, it's, it's the way I carry myself. You see something in me, and you might want it, yeah. and that's that's what we've been taught. Um, let's talk about, you know, how you got started with what you're doing. Where did that begin? It's, that's a great question. You know, when when I was um, when I was incarcerated this last time, um, you know, I was very scared. Um, I was. Um, you know, they, they put me in what's called an aggravated assault tank, you know, and which was a mistake, but yet now I look at it, it wasn't. Um, you know, I was a drug addict, alcoholic, runner, you know, probation, you know, um, I stole stuff, but I never put hands on people. Right. I never did that. But 
So I get in this aggravated assault tank with murderers and, you know, they're doing life. I mean, people getting killed right in front of me, you know, and, and it was just rock and roll. And, you know, I was in this, you know, four by nine cell and I'd be locked up for 22 hours of the day and, mm. you know, be able to move around. But when I moved around, I couldn't sit still. And I was very quiet. And, you know, I had to get, it was scary at first, but I just gave up. But, you know, I'm white, I'm proper, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I walk into this environment where, I'm the minority, right. you know, and I walk in this environment and, you know, so they, they thought I was gay or a cop, you know, they, <laughs> they didn't know because I was just so proper. And so I was very quiet, but I would move around. I would just pace and pace and pace because I was just so nervous. I couldn't get out of my head. And I had this 75 year old, um, Sully, my cellmate. Um, and when they called him, ooh, wee, and he literally pulled me in and they called me rabbit. And, you know, he said, hey, said, rabbit, let me tell you something. They're going to chew you off the bone because, you know, you're going to prison, you know, because your judge has had it with you. And I said, what do you mean I'm out in that world? And he says, you're out in that world. You're doing a hard time. Um, and what he was really saying was I was out in the future in my head alone. You know, mm -hmm. I was tripping. Mm -hmm. I was future tripping. And then I was, you know, living in the past. And then just something miraculous happened where, you know, I took this for granted. I, I had no idea. I've never been around a grown man or men that could not read or write. I mean, they're like, they got it together. They got their, they got their hustle on. And I mean, they're like, they, they appear to be very educated, but they literally, they can't read or write. And he asked me to read to him and it blew me away. And, um, and this guy's doing life for murder, you know, and he's 75 years old. And, and I said, okay, you know, what's, what's the catch here? You know, um, so I read to him and then I realized that four days go by and I had this sense of peace and I just wasn't, I wasn't out in that world anymore. I didn't realize it then. And of course I was just reading this Bible to him. It's black words on white paper. I didn't want any part of a Bible, you know? Mm -hmm. And, but it hit me that four days went by and I wasn't out in the world anymore. And then I started to realize, um, I was in the now because I was serving someone else expecting mm -hmm. no nothing in return mm -hmm. and then i had this you know spiritual awakening where um you know the the holy spirit and, you know i use these church words now you know but <laughs> i'm a I, i'm a believer my higher power is, is christ and you know i'm very committed to just show the world what he's doing in my life i'm not this jailhouse minister i'm not a pastor you know right. i don't wear that jacket yes um but i just go out and i try to show the world uh who Christ is by my actions. Right. I'm a punk. You know, I, I mess up, but I realize it now. That's the cool thing. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a long answer, but um, so that's what I do today is I just simply do the same thing. And um, there's no end to my story. It still happens. There's a reason why you called me. People need to know I've known you for a long time. Yes. yes. And you've seen me come yes. in and out and in yes. and out. And um, there's a reason why I'm sitting here with you today. And I, I totally can relate to that. Mm -hmm. I, I think wherever I'm placed, uh, there's this um, one little thing in in my 12-step program that yeah. I work. And I ask God to place me where he would want me to be, where I can be of service. Right. And for that being said, that covers a lot of grounds for me. Right. You know, and, and I, you mentioned that when you went to prison that you don't know what caused these people to come to you and say, you know, we can't read. Right. And, and taking a circumstance like that and making it where it can benefit others. Right. That's phenomenal. Which, you know, it's beautiful. And, and, and before I get into this, and, and this is really cool how this is happening, because people need to know on your show how how many people you have helped i've seen it firsthand i mean you have got the most giving gracious grateful heart of helping people i've thank seen you. it in action thank you and it's it's um what you're doing here this show god's got something really big happening here for you i feel it thank i couldn't you. wait to do this um because it was on my heart and i want to share it later on the show what i'm feeling for you um but the um I got so I, I I lost my mind there, which is very rare. <laughs> of what I was going to say because I, I want people to know that. But what's interesting is 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 there is a um, I I do I too work twelve step you know recovery programs and um, I'm very um, 
I don't wave a certain flag, mm -hmm. but I highly suggest if anybody's like, okay, what do I do? How do I, how do I get what you guys got? Yes. You know, um, local 12 step recovery groups, I highly endorse. They work for me. Yes. You know, they work for me. Um, and you know, there's something that I, I've studied and I, I would hear it and I thought it was witchcraft, but there's a thing called being rocketed to the fourth dimension, <laughs> right? Yes. And being rocketed to the fourth dimension for me is that I see things through God's perspective. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is that's when we get to go into the past with God and we get to see, I see what you were doing. Yes. I see why you allowed this to happen. Yes. You know, I, I see why you allowed, and this is deep. I mean, I see why you allowed my grandfather to to violate me and all that mm -hmm. so I can share my experience for other men to raise their hands yes. saying, you just told my story. Yeah, because I can't share with you if I haven't had that experience. Right. I can only give you what I know about personally. Right. And, and sometimes... Things happen to us in the past, and they become our biggest blessings. Like, you know, being in recovery has been my biggest blessing. But had you asked me this um, 12 years ago, that's the worst thing that could possibly have happened to me. Right. Because at the, when you're in the mix of it, you can't see it. Right. You got to get through it in order to see the blessing of it. And how do you get through it? One day at a time. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> right. One day at a time. And, you know, and sometimes it's a struggle. Nobody told me just because I got sober, everything would be great. Mm. It doesn't happen like that because right. I no longer have, I call drug and alcohol a Band-Aid. I don't have that anymore. So now I've got to deal with life. Right. And how do I deal with life? And I, I like where you mentioned, you know, I had that you had to get out of yourself and be a service to others. And that gets me out of myself. Yes. And, and that's such a great feeling. You know, it's, it, this is something cool to talk about because that too can be an addiction, service mm -hmm. work. Yes. Because um, I, I see people, I see it because I've done it. Mm -hmm. um, because service work can be an addiction because we want to stay busy because we don't want to look at ourselves. Yes. And so what does that look like? You know, well, I'm serving others because I have motives, mm. right? But when I'm yes. serving some, I have no motives here today. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And so when I'm serving, expecting nothing in return, there's that sense yes. of peace and it puts me in the safest place in the world. And that's right here right now because that's where God's at. Yes. Right? Yes. And so that's what's such a great feeling of, yes. of, of doing that. And, and so, but something that I've learned from you and watching you and, and hearing you speak um, is that in a 12-step recovery group, um, you know, resentment, it's the number one offender. It's killing the human race. Yes. It's killing the human race. You look at everything that's going on in the world today, it's resentment driven. Yes. I mean, and so what is the solution to resentment? Well, if I have a resentment, it's because I play a role in it. Mm -hmm. I have play a my role, part. my part. I have a part. And, and looking and accepting the part that I play in things and the difficult things, mm -hmm. like, you mean I played a part in my grandfather molesting me? I did. I chose to hold on to the resentment. Right. And it, You didn't have a part in it as a child. Right. But as an adult, you now have a part in it. And right. And that's where a lot of people, we don't get that. Right. But- now you have a part. It's how you carry it on into your adulthood. That's correct. And you know how we, you, so how do I, why do I get it now? Mm -hmm. Because step three is I made a decision to turn yes. my will and life over to the care of God. Yes. And so once I start looking, once again, everything through the rocket of the fourth dimension through God's perspective, I'm mm -hmm. like, I see what you're doing. Yes. I see what doesn't make sense to me, doesn't make sense to me, but I'm not you, God. Yes. I got to take the cotton out of my ears and put it in my mouth going, God, why Why are you allowing this yes. to happen? There's a reason. I love step three, um, turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him, right. understand him. I recently start changing, relating will is my thinking mm -hmm. and my life is my action. Yeah. So when I make it, I have to dumb size it for me sometimes. Yes. So I can, when I'm going through everyday life, 
when I'm going through something, I can look at it that way. Right. And where does this, where is my will, which is my thinking, aligning up to God's? Right. And that helps me a lot throughout the day. Right. When I can get back on that, then, you know, I, I've got a, a little chance. Right. Of, of correcting whatever it is. I've got all this stuff that goes on up here, and it's crazy. Right. So I have to downsize some things. It's, it's like when I came into the program, I told them, you know, I had to downsize my God. Yeah. He was too big. Yeah. You know. Um, What's that look like? How do you, how do, you oh do that? Oh, my God. You know how you go to McDonald's and they say, do you want to upgrade on that Big Mac? <laughs> well, I had to do the opposite. I had to downgrade on gotcha. that Big Mac. Right? Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and I said this in my, sh- my po- uh, show a lot that, you know, when I was a kid, we used to sing that song and it said he's got the whole world in his hands. Mm-hmm. The world's pretty, pretty big. It is. Right? So where do I fit in? Right. Little bitty me. So... Today I know if he can carry the whole world on his shoulders, he can carry this little bitty person right here on his shoulders. Amen. That Amen. He's, he's got me. Yeah. You know, so I had to come and be a monster, a lot of addict, 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 alcoholics, I can't talk, mm-hmm. in addicts, mm-hmm. in order to realize how, what those things that I was taught in church really meant. Right. You know, like when you say you went to prison and these people that you were so different from, you guys are the ones that brought me to God. Right. Because I didn't know how that looked. I would go to church on Sundays and I left them in church. Yes. And then I go back on Sundays. You guys taught me that Lorene, he goes everywhere with you. You don't leave him any place. You take him with you. Right. So you mentioned earlier about people using recovery as um, something like so scapegoat, yeah. not to live. I used to do that. Yeah, we stay busy because we don't want to look at ourselves. Didn't want to look at myself. It happens with everyone. I mean, it happens in the church and in, in all mm-hmm. that. And, you know, and I always say this before I, when I speak, you know, um, I, I say a couple of things when I get up to speak is that, first of all, I drank alcohol and did drugs for the effect. Yes. That's it. And that's mm-hmm. true recovery there. It's not because I was dealt a bad deck. If you had my life, you'd do this. No, mm-hmm. that's active addiction, mm-hmm. right? That's selfish. Right. right. Um, I drink for the effect. And, you know, when it, when it comes to religion, um, I'm an agnostic, okay? Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the word of God and the gospel uh, and, and the Bible, for me, I'm all in. Yes. I have to have the truth. Mm-hmm. I've got to have that because I'll never achieve it, but I want to know what the truth is. Yes. Um, I am a huge, huge Dr. Tony Evans man. I oh, mean, me too. Okay, so that's... Oh, my goodness. You know, he's a big part of my story, um, and, you know, his book is the book that was given to me when I was incarcerated, the book Detours, and it mm-hmm. talks about the story of Joseph. And, and what Pastor Evans is so good at is there's no gray... It's Mm -hmm. right down the middle. And I love how he says, you know, what is addiction? And and first of all, he says, you know, addiction is the street name for spiritual stronghold. Okay. Uh We're all addicts. Uh Okay. We all suffer with with something. Yeah. And so what is it? Addiction is a, it's a person. It's a place. Mm -hmm. It's a thing. And here's the scary one or a thought that has become my source. Mm-hmm. It's powerful. Mm-hmm. And right mm-hmm. there, that sums it up that we are all addicts. And so mm-hmm. when I start reaching out for people, places, things, or my thoughts become my source, yes. I'm usually isolating. I'm alone in my head, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to change the way I feel because yes. something deep inside yes. of me is wrong. And guess where it all stems from? Fear. Mm-hmm. Fear. Yes. You know, I'm making up stories in my head uh-huh. that aren't that true. That aren't true. And only I can see them. But I want you to be able to see them. Don't you know how I want you to see me? Lorene, I need you to co-sign <laughs> on my resentment. Yes. I need you to tell me it's yes. okay to be upset. Yes. And to have that person to say, what role are you playing in this? Mm-hmm. What's the mm-hmm. real problem here? The mm-hmm. real problem is I'm trying to play God. Yes. I'm spiritually disconnected. Yeah, I didn't know what playing God was until I got into a 12-step program. Right. I didn't know how much I played. Right. I tried to, 
you know. And, and he'll let you. Yeah. He'll let you. Yeah, until he'll. it's an, okay enough. We're yeah. done with that. Yeah. One thing that, you know, part of my story is I always say, you know, God allowed me to have all the control I wanted mm -hmm. for everything to become completely out of control for me to hit my knees and turn to him to realize I never had control in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, uh, yeah. take, it yeah. takes so much pain for us to surrender. Because I used to f struggle with that, especially the third step. Right. Because I struggled with that because I'm, I thought I'm not done. Right. And I didn't realize, well, it's not, you're not controlling anything anyway. Right. You, you just think you're in control. Right. You're not controlling anything. Right. So you mentioned a Gnostic. Mm hmm I, you know, I get, some people get, you know, we talk about our program, some people get it quickly, some people, I get it slowly. And I always say, here I am, I'm Me the too. slow one. Me too. Because once that light bulb does go off for me, it's mm -hmm. like, that's what that means. Right. And I get this, I don't know, I can't explain it to you, mm -hmm. this feeling. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you understand what I'm talking well, about. Well, and the reason why, my personal experience, the reason why I got it, it took so long and it was slowly for me. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What's that look like? Is because it took so long for me to get from my head mm -hmm. to my heart. Uh-huh. Yes. That's what that 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 was it eighteen inches you uh -huh. know it it took fifty you know forty eight years for me mm -hmm. to get from my yeah. head to my heart yes and that was a journey but the mm -hmm. great thing is is that eighteen inches right there I get to share what happened within that eighteen inches to help someone else yes. that maybe it can narrow it down to you know quickly mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. they, they they say high bottom low bottom I mean I was like it was low you yes know, low for me. Um, so it's, um, you know, that's where the, when I'm in my head alone, there's no God. Mm -hmm. There's just mm -hmm. no God. And mm -hmm. it's, and I know the great thing about recovery and being, being a believer or however you want to call it is that I recognize it today. Yes. I never yes. could recognize it. Mm -hmm. I was always trying to fix it myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the beautiful thing yeah. is, is recognizing it. Yes. So. You, you can't fix something that you don't know that you have. Right. You know, I, one thing about this program it, that I love too is I always, I was so many different people. You know, I, five people would not describe Loreen as a, this, in the same way. Right. And my friend today, she says, you know what? I, I watch you interact with people. You're always the same with everybody. Yeah. We talk about the Dr. Jekyll. Yeah, Mr. Hyde. And, and, oh, yes. And that was me. Yeah. You know, I had And I catch mimic. myself sometimes doing it today. It, it's, it's because you, you are the subconscious mind only knows learned behavior. Right. So when I'm at odds with myself, that I go back to what makes me comfortable. Right. So today I can recognize when I'm, when I'm going there. Right. That's the beauty part of it. It didn't, you guys didn't tell me that I was going to be perfect. Right. And wash white as snow. That's right. kind of impossible here. Right. But, um, you told me that I did not have to live the life the way I was living. Right. That I, w I could have some tools. Right. And it was up to me what I, what I would do with those tools. Right. You know, so it makes it, it's a lot easier for me today when I know that I'm going through something right. to realize that, you know, this is just a feeling right now and feelings pass, right. whether they good or whether they're bad. Right. You know, it's a feeling and it's how it's, we handle it today. It's how I handle yeah. it. That's, that's important. And that's what I have so much respect for you in, in that aspect. You know, I want to flip this on you. I know this is your <laughs> show, but I told you before we, before we started filming that I had, I had some questions for you because of, okay. because I, the spirit really led me to do this and, it's questions that I ponder in my head because I look at things differently now through God's perspective. And I'm like, where's the opportunity here, how I can help another person? Mm -hmm. You know, when I was incarcerated as you, you know, uh, being the minority, I see everybody as a human being, you know, mm -hmm. and, but I was, um, I, I was the minority and these, this family that I, that God gave me that I was surrounded with, and I miss them to this day. I mean, mm -hmm. I really miss them. I mean, they such these are people who 
planned and plotted to kill people, but I just saw something different in mm -hmm. them, you know, living with them. They were, mm -hmm. um, they had wrecked lives and what they did was wrong and they admitted it, you know, um, and they're trying, a, you know, a new life and then recovery. And I've noticed that they're very engaged and very focused on their recovery and in, in, when incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Then I started recognizing that when I got released and I started getting into the world of recovery and in, in the rooms and 12-step support group meetings, that the African-American community, I don't see it. You mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm looking mm -hmm. around. And when I do see it, it's males. Mm -hmm. I see mm -hmm. very few females in mm -hmm. the african-american community mm -hmm. attending recovery group meetings mm -hmm. is that an accurate observation it is very and help me with this because you're so powerful and i wanted to bring that up because mm -hmm. like i said god's got something big happening here mm -hmm. that you can be this light saying it is. come on in <laughs> i mean what am i seeing here it is um with with a lot um well, this is just my opinion right. only because I can't speak for everyone. But I, I think we're such caretakers. Hmm. And the female, you mentioned that I, my thing is I don't see a lot of females, period, in the rooms. And, That's accurate. And very few um, black women. Right. So you're right with that because a lot of times we raise that what goes on in the house stays in the house. Okay. And we don't talk about it. So I, that was my experience. Yeah. I, it was hard for me in the beginning to open up because I don't want you to think that it's not everything. I like looking a certain way and I want you to think inside I feel that way too. Right. But I can really be hurting inside right. but i don't want to acknowledge that right you know because when i see a sister come into the rooms i gravitate towards her yeah because i want her to know this is a safe place because when i came to addison i i think I don't think it was too many black women in there. And, and, the, and like my main point of this is that's where, because I travel the country, you know, mm -hmm. and speak and, and I attend support group meetings and I'm very observant. I did that when I was in real estate and all that. It's really, I'm always searching that if I have, you know, if, if, if I'm building homes in this neighborhood, well, I've already got this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I want to go try a different area where yes. there's, I, I want to, yeah. it's easy. I always like to hang out in piles where no one knows me. Right. Why well, hang out with everybody knows me? Cause yes. I can't build, yes. you know, God can't use me if yes. I'm hanging out and that's what I'm talking. So I made these observations and it's like, you know, the Asian community, the, yes. um, you know, the Muslim community and mm -hmm. all of this, mm -hmm. it's a very specific it's just an op we both see it, you know, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's yeah. an observation. And so my question is, is why, you know, what can I do personally to make uh, groups and church more open yes. and friendly to and all that? And you touched on something that's really interesting that I've heard before, because I've asked this question before, even when I was incarcerated, is that it's, you call it culture, whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. it's an upbringing where, hey, this is the way I've raised you. Mm -hmm. When you walk out of this house, you put those walls up. Yes. You don't let them see you hurt. Right. Um, and and I get that, that too. As alcoholics and addicts. Right. That we already have that. So if you reinforce that with a, a woman that's already strong willed, mm -hmm. on top of that, that's what you get. It's, right. It's like, when and I, that'll kill her. It will. It'll. And that's why, that's another reason why I wanted to start my show here. Right. Is I want people to, to see there's help. There's no, no shame. Right. Because there's a lot of people that aren't coming into a 12-step room. Right. And perhaps, you know, there's a different way to get the message out. Right. You know, and that, that was my thought behind Silver Lining. Yeah. I want to... We're always revolving, and right. we're always growing, and we're always learning to do the new things. Right. So let's branch out and do something more right. if that's possible. Right. Because right now, and you know this for, sh for yourself too, Michael, that the 12-step rooms are full. Yeah. I mean, 
with COVID came, it was like boom. Yeah. It hit us really hard. Right. And there's a lot of people that don't know that there's places. It, it's there's so many different twelve steps that you can use. Right. And there's people that you can reach out. Plus, I wanted them to see faces like your face, my right. face, and other people that say, "Hey, if they." could do it why can't i we're just human beings being human yes right yeah. yeah and not make it so complicated like it's a secret right you know no I, I it's not a secret right it's like it's there is help and there is people that are willing to help right you know so that that was that was one of the big reasons behind several lining too and that's and it touches on like into the rock you know it's it, it it started out, and I never intended it for it to be about. It's still not today. It's not about addiction and recovery. It's mm-hmm. about hope. Yes. It's about people sharing their experience, strength, yes. and hope on simply this. What was your life like? You know, how did you uh-huh. get into acting and all yes. that? And yes. What What happened? You know, what uh-huh. happened in your life that was this big awakening yes. that got you to the next level? And what are you doing today to maintain yes. that? And you that's know, a big thing, maintaining. Yes. You, I mean. And maintaining wow. that is service. Yes. You know, and yes. you know, and working at a food shelter and all that. I used to think of service work as like, I, I don't want to go to a food shelter. You know, it's, it's the visual I would get. And yes. it's important. You know, that's great mm-hmm. stuff. But service work can, can simply be um, taking time out of the day and just saying, you know what? I'm thinking about Lorene. Hey, Lorene, I text you. How are you doing today? Uh-huh. Simple or service as work. that. Just yes. simple as that. Simple and as saying, that. hey, you're on my heart today. Yes. And just text it because who you know knows? How much, how I don't know what you're going through. That makes you feel. Yeah. Yes. And expecting nothing in expecting return. Expecting nothing. You know, because yeah. expectations set us mm-hmm. up for resentments, mm-hmm. which is the number one offender that's killing the human mm-hmm. race. Because I think you either think like me. Right. <laughs> That's exactly, that's exactly right. And if so, you don't, I get resentful. That's exactly right. So and it's, it's a, um, it, the life, I'm learning that life is very simple, but I complicate it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mm-hmm. complicate it. And the reason why I love doing what you and I are doing, and I hope you can relate to this, as we've been talking, I haven't once gone into the future in my head alone. I know. <laughs> and I haven't gone into the past in my head alone. Yes. And the reason why is because we're serving, hoping yes. someone hears this, and yes. we're in the now. Yes. We're right here, right now. You're a great interviewer. Yeah. I mean, this well, is thank beautiful. You. And and so it's it is a um, you know, I get I hate talking about I mean, I love sharing my story, but I hate talking about me. We get thousands of messages on social media through M to the Rock. And the most common thing that we get is, you know, my husband, my wife, my daughter, my son, my loved one needs mm-hmm. help with addiction. Mm-hmm. Will you please call them and help them? Well, we have a standard reply, but no. Mm-hmm. You know, they have to mm-hmm. reach out yes. and do it. That's what it took and for me. Yes. And, and people don't understand that. No. And step one is, is you know, we admitted that we were powerless over blank, which mm-hmm. is alcohol, uh-huh. drugs, porn, yes. game, yes. whatever it is, mm-hmm. our thoughts, mm-hmm. that our life has become completely unmanageable. Mm-hmm. Well, powerless and unmanageable, I, I got honest with that, but I kept drinking and using, uh-huh. all right? Mm-hmm. True honesty, and this is a message for the people who message and all of this, true honesty is for me is simply this, I don't know why I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. Help me. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I'm drinking and doing drugs. I don't know why, Lorene, that when I wake up in the morning, I look at myself and I say, I'm not drinking today. Uh-huh. And I mean it. Uh-huh. And I'm drinking at noon. Yes. Why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. And it's okay to ask that question to someone in recovery. Yes. Someone that can't relate to alcoholism or drug addiction, uh-huh. they're going to say this, just don't do it. Uh huh. So simple. <laughs> why can't you stop? Yeah. Why just just don't open yeah. the can of beer and drink it? Yeah. It's not that simple. No, because it's the reason. I mean, that's yeah. just a symptom. It's, it's with step one, and it here's another one of these little things that it took me, I think, a year in the program before it hit. Mm-hmm. And someone, and the way I got it was someone mentioned it because I might have been doing something, uh, going around. I'm, I'm always asking people stuff. Right. Stupid stuff, too. And 
he said to me, the way you know that you are an alcoholic is, you know how you drink water and you get full? Well, with alcohol, you never get full. Mm -hmm. You want more, more, more. And I got that, but I couldn't get, you know, I'm powerless of alcohol. And it's like, what does that mean? Right. But when he explained it to me that way, I had to remember, oh, that's right. Because my sides can be really hurting from all that drinking, right? You right. know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. But I still keep going. Right. You know, and then you have people that say, well, I can't be one because I don't drink every day. Right. It has nothing to do with that. When you start up, can you stay stopped? Right. You know, because, you know, in the 12-step program, we cannot label anyone as being an alcoholic. Right. You have to do it. Right. You have to do it. Well said. And it, it has to be complete honesty with yourself. That's right. You know, to say, you know what, this isn't right. Right. Other people can tell you that all day long, but you have to do it. Right. And once I did that, it was like, okay, now maybe I can do something about it. Right. And that's that's where the work comes in. So also in when people reach out and ask for help, um, why is it so important that men work with men and women work with women? Not, not anymore. For the, uh, not anymore. No. Oh, okay. No, they they changed that. Okay. Yeah. So because it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, um, it's just another alcoholic talking to another alcoholic. Huh. Only even walking them through the steps. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's changed. So oh, good. Yeah, I don't know about. I know about the twelve step program that I'm in. Right. I don't know about any other ones, but yeah, that's changed. Oh, so, good. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. We'll and have to touch I, on that I, another I show. Yeah. And I. You love know what? That. I'm gonna do this right here, right here, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on blast right now. I'm feeling <laughs> led by the spirit. I think you and I ought to do a show once a month. Really? I really do. I would love that. I'm telling you, I think that this is amazing because cool. I don't know if you know this, but M2 The Rock, um, once again, they came to us. Our show is on every single tablet in every single prison. Are you kidding? So, I mean, that's when, amazing. So, this show we're doing here will be downloaded on the tablets on wow. every prison. And wow. so they'll be able, so it's another way that we get yes. to get your message from yes. a female side, yes. you know, into behind the walls, uh, awesome. that they can hear that not only to, to, I would love to do that. It would be an honor well, we, to we, do that. It's got you. great dialogue and yes. you know, it's, we can have, um, we can have healthy conversations. Yes. We can cross those, they're barriers to the uh -huh. world. They're not barriers to you and me because mm -hmm. it's all about one alcoholic, one drug addict. It's mm -hmm. all about one sinner helping oh, yeah. another. Oh yeah. I mean, you can oh yeah. Talk about it. Talk about all that. Yeah. You know. You no, know, we mentioned. You mentioned. Uh, we mentioned about. You know, the fourth step, and about not having any um, part of. Because when you we work that step, it's like, what was your part? And. Yeah. Well, lay out the fourth step for our for our viewers who don't know the anything. The fourth we're talking step about. is um, where you um, write down your resentment. It's the inventory part right. of the twelfth. So step. we made a fearless and searching moral More inventory, inventory of, of our ourselves. immoral behaviors, yes, basically. But we also get to see what we're good at. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So so it's like we say in the program: you you cannot um, clean house without taking an inventory. Right. And we can't make amends. What you got. We can't make amends yes. to anybody until we yes. know why we did the things we did. And people struggle with that yeah. one because they don't want to do it. That's when they one, two, three, and they out. Right. What they don't realize, well, what I didn't realize is in the beginning, and with the reason I struggle with it, I've already went through that shit. Right. And nobody asking me to do anything new. Right. And that's what I try to tell the the people that I work with. Not asking you to do anything new. I just need you to write down what you've done. But one word that I use with them, I tell them, I need you to paint me a picture because I wasn't there. Right. So I need to see exactly what happened. And when I use that word, it's like they get it. Yeah. I want details. Yeah. So, yeah. So so you're saying that we, we write down our fears and our resentments mm -hmm. uh, against People, places, places things, institutions, anything. Mm -hmm. And and so um, I heard something really cool um, 
Uh, I was I heard a speaker in Florida share and and he touched on something because a lot of people, me including, in, in early recovery, you know, step two we get some hope, mm -hmm. and when we start getting hope, we start feeling I would I'm getting better. Uh -huh. No, I'm detoxing. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. I'm physically <laughs> feeling better. But I yeah. still can't answer the question why I drank and did drugs. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's where we, in step four, we get to find out why yes. we did it. We, and it, that's the work. That's right. That's action. The, that's the action. Yeah. And I also tell people, oh, I don't want to do the dreaded fourth step. Well, uh -huh. when we do step three correctly, step four is easy. Yes. Because we've surrendered. Yes. I don't care, Lorraine. I'm ready to get it all out there. Yeah. You know, if I, you hurt him bad enough, you'll get it out there. Yes. And I, I heard you guys say in the program in, in, Share with me your experience on this. I, the men always talk about after they do the third step, they they pray with their with whoever with their mentor sponsor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've never did do that, but I li I love listening to it's some uh, speakers that I listen to. I love these guys, right? And one of them said the reason he does that is he knows that his person is getting it done. Right. So yesterday I was going through, um, I finished up the third step. And for the first time, I prayed with my, my person. Oh. And it was amazing. Awesome. Yes. I and I'm not an emotional person by no means. I think you are. I and think my, I'm, I'm, y'all mark my words. I'm, I'm going to make her cry on the show. Oh, that's a challenge right there. But we should put some bids up for that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it was, I felt some sort of way and it was amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, I would start doing that from now on. That's beautiful. So, yeah, but I never heard females do that. I don't know whether. I just I just heard you guys saying it all the time. Well, it's the only way to to do the steps wrong is not doing them. Yes, so that's it. It's and not a wrong or right way. Yeah, right? and it's I not totally agree. And it's not you. It's not when we work all twelve steps, we're finished. Mm -hmm. There's no Never. such word as as graduating. Uh -huh. You know, we, we have to. We, 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 it's a daily deal. Yes, you know. Yes. Um, Thank God. If if I knew that recovery was easy, I'd be drunk and high right now, and I'd come <laughs> check come in back. on Monday. I'll come in Monday. Because you yeah. don't have a choice when you're going to come back. Exactly. You might not make it back. Exactly. So that's the scary part. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> so it's a, um, um, but, you know, step three, step three, step three happened for me, you know, my awakening, and I had this mm -hmm. spiritual bright light ex experience, mm -hmm. and it happened, and once that happened, um, I flew through the, the 12 steps, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. once I got released and with sponsor and I just reworked the 12 steps again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I've recently gone through a relationship uh, breakup, which was new, but it's a growing opportunity uh -huh. for me. Mm -hmm. um, and it is just, I'm so much stronger today. Uh -huh. There's no resentments. Uh -huh. You know, I want everybody awesome. to win. Yes. And um, I'm just in such a good place today of peace and hope. Awesome. Um, and then doing stuff like this with you. Yeah. So. Well, we're going to wrap it up. All right. And I just want you to know how much this means to me. And vice I mean, versa. Oh, my goodness. Let's, I'm, I'm telling like, you we need to do this. We will. We'll, I mean, this is something that, and once again, if, if I'm going to put this show on my platforms. Okay, That thank way you. everybody can see it. Yes. And, um, and I'm going to. I'm going to take a picture one day with my normie shirt. I can't wait for my <laughs> normie it. shirt. Oh, I'm going to have to bring it to. Well, that's you? okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to. I'm in a, another vehicle. I just remembered. That's okay. But I got you. Get you get it to me. I just. I just. Well, we're going to get back together anyway. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah, I got you. All right. What do you wear? A medium? You got to show those muscles. Sh sh medium. So sh medium. You need a medium. Yeah, give me, give me a medium <laughs> or large. But thank you so much, Lorraine. God well, bless thank you. you for, thank you for, you know, being here. Yeah. Wow. You're the real deal. I feel like you're interviewing me about, thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> that's, we had a conversation. Yes. 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 Thanks, guys, for joining us on Silver Lining. And it was an honor having Michael here today. And we will see you next time. And have a great day.